Michelle Inge Roquet started up as a fisher at the age of 16 years, and 20 years later, he had 200 million U.S. dollars ready to spend on new adventures after selling his shares of his fish companies and boats. If you're curious how he can make such a fortune from starting with no money, check out the video about how he got rich on illegal fishing. You'll find a link to the video in the description to this video. Today's topic is how Chell Inge became the richest person in Norway despite spending time in prison. Chell Inge is famous for his temper and don't think laws and regulations apply to him. Already when he was just 17 years of age, he was convicted for driving a car without driver's license and for driving and being drunk. A newspaper printed an article about Chell Inge's girlfriend using one of Chell Inge's company's private jet for a personal vacation with friends. Chell Inge was not the sole owner of the company, so the other shareholders didn't think this was okay. A Norwegian magazine wrote about this incident and Chell Inge became furious. He phoned the journalist and said he was going to kill him. He also reached out to the editor and threatened him. He said, I'm going to send someone from Kosovo, Albania, home to visit you. Another journalist wrote an article about Chalinge's son's luxurious vacation. Chalinge did threaten the female journalist by saying he was going to destroy her career. Chalinge had a business feud with a known business leader for a large company. At a convention speaking to 500 people, Chalinge stated the following, if I had been so stupid as you, I would have sued my parents. Returning to Norway in the early 90s, he partnered with another Norwegian, Bjorn Rune Chelsten. The two years older Bjorn Rune said in many ways different to Chell Inge. He was school smart and had five years economic education. Together, they owned the company Resource Group International, RGI. With Bjorn Inge's smartness, Chelling Gay's ruthlessness, they started many different business adventures. They bought clothes brands and other companies. They got into real estate and built houses and commercial buildings both in Norway and in the USA, Florida. Then the partners set their eyes on one of Norway's oldest companies, the former industry giant Acre. Chell Inge Roquet used his investment company Resource Group International to purchase large amounts of Acre shares and merged the two companies in 1996 to form Acre RGI. In 1999, Chelston and Chell Inge parted ways when he bought Chelston shares and Acre RGI. In 2000, Acre acquired a significant shareholding in the Werner Industrial Group. In the fall of 2001, Werner experiences an acute liquidity crisis. Comprehensive rescue effort in the winter of 2001-2002 in which Acre and other Werner shareholders, customers and creditors and employees all play important roles enables Werner to survive with Acre at its largest shareholder. In order to save Werner and Acre's investment in Werner, Chell Inge convinced the largest Norwegian bank, DNB, to give him a giant loan. This was not without controversy. Both media and financial supervisory authority of Norway investigated how it was possible to loan such a big loan to one person. Some years later, one member from the bank board of directors reveals what really happened. The board of directors did vote no to give Chell Inge the loan. The chief executive officer, Sven Acer, and chairman Gerhard Heiberg worked the whole night contacting board members trying to get them to change their mind. The obvious question is, why? Do they have any personal interest they want to protect? It's very strange that they should work so hard to get the bank to give a loan. It's even more strange if we look at the chairman's connection to Chell Inge. Five years prior to this, they were in a similar situation. Chelinge tried to purchase a company where Heiberg was the chairman. First, they said no, but Chelinge visited Heiberg when he was on a vacation and got him to change his mind. In 2009, nine years later, Heiberg becomes a member of the board for Acre. Could this be some kind of payment for giving Chelinge the big loan? After Chelinge saved the company and his influence over it, the company grew to Norway's third largest company. Acre has today ownership in many different companies that deals with oil and gas, renewable energy and green technologies, maritime assets, 
marine biotechnology, and industrial software. In business, Chalinga is doing great, but in 2001, a story about him bribing his way to a boat license emerges in Norwegian newspapers. As a former fishboat captain for large fishboats, Chalinga was used to handling big boats. Chalinga did also race professional speedboats. In fact, he and Bjorn Rune became world champions in offshore powerboat racing. In Norway in the early 2000s, new regulations and laws for large yachts were passed. Chalinge loves the sea in big boats, and he owned, at that time, one of the world's most expensive yachts. The captain of the yacht had to have a license. It would be unthinkable for Roke not to be the captain of his own yacht. One could get the license by doing a theoretical and practical test. Jalinge was approached by a man called Christor Tromstall, and he said that he had a friend who could get Jalinge's license without passing any tests. His friend knew a Swedish official, Kleis Palin, who could issue a Swedish license that would be legit in Norway. This was, of course, tempting for Jalinge. He has dyslexia, and learning from reading books uh, was a bit difficult for him. Therefore, passing theoretical tests would be a challenge for the billionaire. Christer Tromsdahl said if Chell Inge would pay him 10000 USD, he could arrange everything. Chell Inge gladly did so, but he was in for a big surprise. Tromsdahl recorded that whole conversation where Chell Inge says he's going to bribe his way to a license. Story broke in Norwegian newspaper, and at the beginning, it was no evidence for the bribe. Then Christer Tromsdahl thought he was smart, so he tried to blackmail Chell Inge into paying him money for the recorded tapes. Chell Inge didn't react the way Tromsdahl thought because Chell Inge hired a convicted felon, Janik Iverson, to get him the tapes. Christer Tromsdahl and his co-conspirators that organized the boat license hustle got scared, so they testified to the police about their involvement. Every one of them got immunity, but Chellinge was sentenced to 120 days in prison. But there's more to this story, and that's now being revealed. In 2019, the police in Norway charged Janik Iverson with extortion and threatening Chellinge during the fall of 2017. Prosecutors claim that Janik threatened to go public with unfavorable information about Chellinge if the billionaire failed to pay him as much as $2 million. In 2017, a Norwegian newspaper, VG, made articles about recorded tapes where Chell Inge was speaking to Por Arvland. Por Arvland used to be married with Chell Inge's ex-wife and used to be one of Chell Inge's friends. He was not such a good friend because he made recordings of their conversations. In the tapes, Per Arvland and Chell Inge talks about how Per Arvland got millions from Chell Inge to give to the felon Janik Iverson as a payment for helping Chell Inge with something. Tapes clearly reveal that Chell Inge has paid Janik a great amount of money. The tapes do not reveal what the money was payment for. Remember Christopher Tromsdahl that tried to blackmail Chellinge also with recorded tapes? Christopher Tromsdahl got shot in the knee by Janik some years after the boat license scandal. Janik was convicted and sent to prison. Parverland thinks Christopher Tromsdahl got shot after orders from Chellinge. The money was payment from Chellinge to Janik for his services. Why did the police charge Janik for extortion and threatening? Well, because Janik was not pleased with the articles in the newspaper. He turned up at Chellinge's home and offices many times unannounced and said that Chellinge shouldn't have mentioned his name on the tapes. He meant that Chellinge should pay him money because he'd broken their agreement. Their agreement was that they shouldn't mention their agreement to anyone, and Chellinge had broken that when he talked to Per Arvland. Chellinge refused to pay Janik, and after several unwanted meetings with Janik, he called the police and took out charges against Janik. The courts didn't believe Janik and sentenced him to prison. Lots of things indicates that Chellinge has paid Janik to get even with Christopher Tromstall. How many billionaires pay criminals to work for them and gets away with it? There are more Chellinge stories, but let's end this video today. Chellinge's main company, where he owns 68.3% of the shares, are doing great. Acker and Companies, in which Acker is the largest investor, had a total turnover of more than $10 billion in 2021. 
and a workforce of approximately 31,000, including temporary hires. About 18,000 of the workforce is located in Norway. I hope you like this story, and if you haven't seen the first video about Chalinge, I can highly recommend it. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.